I'm Willie Oliver. And I'm Elaine Oliver. Together, we serve as directors of the Department of Family Ministries for the Worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church since June 2010. This is a very special year for Family Ministries because this year, 2019, marks a hundred years since the General Conference Committee created the Home Commission on October 8, 1919. Since its inception, Family Ministries has made vital contributions to strengthening families within and outside the Adventist Church around the world. Today, we'll take a look at how Family Ministries came to be, how a worldwide team of leaders continues to champion ministry to families, and what the future holds. First, let's talk about those who served with distinction and paved the way for Family Ministries to grow and flourish. So as we said, Willie, Family Ministries started in 1919 with what early leaders called the Home Commission. Our first leader was Arthur Spaulding, whose wife Maud joined him in developing Christian literature to educate the entire family. In fact, interesting about Arthur Spaulding, he had a conversation with Ellen White, and this is what Ellen White said to him. She said, I want to talk to you about the importance of the work to be done for the parent in the church. She ended that conversation by saying, it is the very most important work before us as a people, and we have not begun to touch it with the tips of our fingers. Wow, that is so powerful, straight from Ellen White herself, and it just reminds us of how important family ministries remains today, even today. So in June of 1941, the General Conference held a convention which focused on the home. That's How correct. exciting is that? Also, during that year, the Home Commission became part of the General Conference's Department of Education. Yes. During the next three decades, marriage and family programs were promoted by parent and home education secretaries from the Department of Education, including Florence Reebok, who led from 1941 to 1947. She was an outstanding leader. She was, wasn't yes, she? Yes, she was. Arabella Moore Williams, who served from 1947 to 1954. That's correct. Archer Dart, 1954 to 1970, who often conducted child guidance seminars and was known for his humor and storytelling ability. And then we have W. John Cannon, who led from 1970 to 1975. In 1975, at the General Conference session in Vienna, Austria, Adventist leaders established a ministry called Home and Family Service and elected Delmer and Betty Holbrook, a husband and wife team, as directors. They organized and conducted training seminars for administrators, pastors, laypeople in every world division. They produced a marriage and family series for radio and produced a film series on pre-marriage education for college students. In 1980, they invited Karen and Ron Flowers to join their team. Five years later, Family Ministries became a part of the newly formed Church Ministries Department. And then, in 1995, the Flowers were elected to lead a new department, which was called Family Ministries. They made significant contributions to the growth and development of this department around the world. They helped to build the Family Ministries infrastructure at each level of the church, from the local church to divisions. They created a leadership training curriculum. They published the Family Ministries Plan Book, which we are still using today, with all kinds of sermon ideas and seminars and leadership resources. They traveled extensively to present seminars and train leaders. They published numerous books and resources, lots and lots of things the Flowers did to establish a very strong Department of Family Ministries. After 30 years in Family Ministries, the Flowers retired, and we were elected to serve at the 2010 General Conference Session in Atlanta. What an amazing privilege and opportunity, and what an amazing ministry that God is using to make a difference in the lives of people and strengthen the church. We'll talk more about what Family Ministries is today, but first, the flowers are here, and we will speak with them in just a moment. Stay with us. This year marks 100 years of Family Ministries, and we've been taking a look at the growth and development of this department and its leadership. Right now, we're joined by two of those leaders, 
Doctors Karen and Ron Flowers served in family ministries for a little over 30 years. Welcome, Karen and Ron. Thank you for inviting us. We're so delighted you're here. And as we get started, my question is, how and why uh, was the decision made to create um, something different than what had been for 34 years in the Department of Education? We had uh, parent and home secretaries in education, but now we were transitioning after 34 years. Robert Pearson was the president of the General Conference then, and he had a real heart for families. And it happens that his secretary was Betty Holbrook. Wow. And in a conversation that occurred in a committee meeting where she was taking notes, uh, this concept of a special service to families was born. And Betty, troubled that night at home, sat down and drafted for her boss the the parameters of what became Home and Family Service. Yeah, Dell used to like to tell a story that um, one night he and Betty were in their uh, uh, home there in Pitcairn Place, and uh, there was a sound at the door, and they went and they saw two gentlemen dressed fully in black. One was, Ominous, huh? <laughs> one was Elder Pearson, and the other was Elder Neil Wilson. And Dell said, we thought somebody had died. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but they came in, and they talked a while, and they said, um, uh, we like the proposal, and we would like you to lead uh, this new ministry. They, they were looking for, for something additional, I think, beyond just parent education. Yes. Wonderful yeah. story. Yeah, I think that's, that's wonderful for us to remember that history because sometimes it seems like family ministries gets pushed to the, to the side a little bit, but this, again, speaks to the fact that there was a commitment to families in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. What a great story. So look, during your tenure, you guys presented many seminars, trainings on marriage and families and parenting. And I remember the first seminar that I attended that you guys, where you guys were speaking. And it really changed my life in many ways because there was something that you did, which um, is something that we've modeled in family ministries. And that is the, the authenticity and transparency of your own lives, you know, without giving too much. What was it that moved you to coming to that place where you presented yourselves as less than perfect. It happened in Michigan camp meeting. This is home turf for me, right? I'm nervous. I've written our scripts because in those days we, we didn't, we worked off a script. And um, I, we had presented whatever the best of ideals told our best stories, given it our all. And a woman uh, came up to me just as we were closing and was telling me how blessed she had been. And then she said to me, I wish I had a husband like Ron. <laughs> I remember I was packing our briefcase <laughs> off to the side and I heard this and I thought, oh, if she really knew. We should back up a little bit though and say that um, when Del and Betty went looking for some help. Um, they visited our church. I was pastoring at the time at Capitol Memorial Church downtown Washington, Washington DC. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they came and visited and then uh, they, had, uh, they talked to us, uh, particularly uh, during part of what we had, the, the Metro Washington Family Life Council. And that was a local sort of think tank that was working on things. And Dell used that as kind of a laboratory for some of his ideas here during the first five years of uh, home and family service. 75 to 80. Yeah, 75 to 80. But, but the thing that they said to us was, hey, you guys need to let people see your life. Uh, open up your life so that they can see it. That this is real. And that this is real. And, and they, so they were, they were really among the first to prompt us to sort of try to to reveal ourselves fully. Now, we didn't grasp that until we yeah, had and, some and that has hard to be reality. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that has to be pretty scary yeah. because I remember the first time Willie said that to, to me and he attended, again, another seminar training by you guys and he says, you know, um, we need to have more transparency. And I'm thinking, like, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the stories are yeah. never needing to be more than a day old, but they best not be told because Absolutely. maybe they're not even resolved yet. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. so, so you started talking about uh, Dell and Betty Holbrook, yeah. who was the couple that was tapped by the church right. in 1975 and were elected there in Austria, in Vienna, Austria, right. that year. Tell us a little bit about your experience with them and uh, what was it like? Dell was a visionary and I remember um, he, he being an educator, he was way ahead of us on the curricular development of, of the content for family ministries. And I remember him bringing Ron and I down into the warehouse in the GC basement and we walked into this room filled with huge boxes which he proudly opened each contained 500 thick three ring binders with topics printed already on the front conflict communication yeah. handling anger he had them all he thought them up himself he'd had them printed in gold on red covers oh and he said your job is to fill these Amazing. How insightful, <laughs> but but ominous, right? Just a little a little daunting. The red notebooks, the red notebooks were were uh, were, were an interesting uh, aspect of those first those first few years. Uh, Dell had had um, uh, gotten us going on premarital in the Metro Washington Family Life Council. We had a subgroup that was working on that, and and uh, I called him up one day, I said, I'd be interested in helping with that as a local pastor. And he called me back then later and he said, oh, and you will lead the group. <laughs> so putting together that uh, first resource that we had called Marriage Education, and then Togetherness, Oneness, Joy, uh, the older crowd among us will remember those two, yeah. those two volumes. Dell liked what he saw, apparently, and that's when he extended the invitation for us to come and join them and do more of this wonderful. kind That's of thing wonderful. to fill these notebooks. That and he you'll be happy to know we still have two of those big red <laughs> notebooks in our office. It was the first sure. thing that I took out of the archives sure you when did. we came here. Yeah. And we, certainly um, what I used uh, when I first became director of family ministries 30 years ago in greater New York, yeah. um, those books, those manuals that you guys developed, it was a wonderful resource. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about John and Millie and, and the beginning of Family Life International? Well, this is really, I think, where we probably, they, they, they set up the scenario where we first got interested uh, in going. Um, we had had some seminars in our church. Dr. John Cannon had, had come to New Haven Church where we were pastoring at the time. And then we heard about this family life workshop that was being offered at Andrews. I read about it first and I said to Ron, let's sign up for this. He looked at it and he said, I don't think so. <laughs> wonder what they're gonna do there. You know, right? Yeah, well, um, she wanted to go to the marriage seminar that was being offered and I said, no, no, no way are we going <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> We'll go to the parenting yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. And the first easier. year we yeah. went to the parenting workshop that they had on the weekend. and then, uh, But the second year, uh, she sent the money in already. <laughs> and and then, being a frugal man. And oh. she said, okay, we're going to the marriage one this, this time. I guess she was t uh, sending you a message. John and Millie, I think, were um, uh, real pioneers in this. And they, they broke it open and made it popular, I think for more and more people to come. Some of our greatest leaders were there and their little, their little kids, I think of Willie and Wilma Lee, yeah. and little Amber was yeah. just a tot yeah. back yeah. in the, uh, she in probably won't day. like that when she hears this <laughs> video. I think she'll be honored. What I do know is that that was a source of inspiration for me as a young director of family ministries yeah. and attended from the early days, yeah. early days for me when I first came in. And for 24 years, for 24 years, they ran this event at, on the campus of Andrews University, yes. 
every single year, Family every Life year. International, every and, and it continues yeah. uh, in different iterations. State of the art. Yeah. Everything that if you wanted to learn what the state of the art was, you went there. Absolutely. One thing they did was they hired an artist who was a, a bit of a cartoony guy, but he was really good. And they shared. Their, their motto was, we happily share. And for those of us who didn't have the resources, we got them from them. It was an amazing time. Well, thank you, Karen and Ron, for commemorating this moment with us. It's uh, been wonderful walking down memory lane and thinking about the wonderful times in family ministries and uh, how God led you and led so many other leaders to make this into something that has made a difference in the lives of people. God has really blessed Family Ministries and we've continued to experience growth. Today we are blessed to have Family Ministries leaders who serve at every level of the Adventist Church, from local churches to each of our 13 world divisions. As we go to break, let's take a look at the leaders from each division and attached field. What is Adventist Family Ministries today? We're glad you asked. Because God loves families, we love families. Our greatest desire is to reach families for Jesus. Our mission is to strengthen, inspire hope, and bring healing to marriages, families, and individuals through the abundant love and saving grace of Jesus Christ. Here are three things to remember. Family Ministries focuses on people in relationships and helps families grow in love and live in harmony as the family of God. Family Ministries happens at the local church and Family Ministries is evangelistic. To strengthen today's families, we create resources and organize training events designed to empower ministry leaders and churches in their work with families. We provide tools to help individuals communicate more effectively deepen commitment in marriage and become better parents. We provide position statements pertaining to family issues, trustworthy 
biblical answers to many questions regarding family life, ideas to launch and build a strong family ministries program in your local church, and information and links to other helpful resources. We can't talk about everything now, but let's talk about a few of the ways we can make things happen. We continue the annual Family Ministries plan book, building on the strengths that the flowers left. And this plan book is now found in French and Italian, in Portuguese, in Russian, and Spanish. And you can download it directly from our website. We've authored the 2019 World Missionary Book of the Year titled Hope for Today's Families. And speaking about that book, it's going to be given out around the world, and we hope you will be a part of that initiative. Evangelism programs, mission to the families in the cities, which is part of our family-to-family -family, uh, resource. Television program, Real Family Talk with William Elaine Oliver, created in 2012. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes baby in the baby carriage. With bottles and diapers and 3 a.m. feedings, it's the best time in your life and perhaps one of the most challenging. We'll talk about preparing for parenthood today on Real Family Talk. And broadcast on Hope Channel around the world each week. We continue to host marriage retreats called From This Day Forward and Journey Toward Intimacy. We co-hosted the historic International Leadership Conference in Budapest, Hungary, under the theme, Reach the World, Issues Impacting Children, Women, and Families, and of course, in partnership with our colleagues in children and, and women's ministries. The Adventist Pan-African Conference on Dynamic Family Relations on the campus of the Adventist University of Africa in Nairobi, Kenya, in collaboration with the three world divisions in Africa. We're also very privileged to work with leaders who value, support, and partner with us. Let's hear from a few of the leaders who believe in the mission to families, starting with our World Church President, Elder Ted Wilson, and his wife, Nancy. Willie and Elaine, we are very thankful for the fine work of Adventist Family Ministries and for your mission to make Jesus the center of our homes and family life. We're also very grateful for the many leaders who paved the way, including Arthur and Maude Spaulding through the Home Commission, Florence Reebok, Arabella Williams, Archa Dart, W. John Cannon, Delmer and Betty Holbrook, who led the Home and Family Service, and Karen and Ron Flowers, who spent 30 years building up the ministry. As you have enthusiastically picked up the mantle and expanded the vision with energy and fervor, we thank you for your leadership and contributions. We also commend those leaders worldwide in each division who are partnering with you to reach families for Jesus. May God continue to guide and direct the work of family ministries and may we all, as a result of this vital nurturing and outreach ministry, experience in our marriages and families a little heaven on earth as we each daily surrender to our Heavenly Father and follow the guidance He has given through His Word, drawing our families closer together as we draw close to Him. And one day very soon, when Jesus returns, may we all gather our families together and the earth made new. And Nancy, together, let's wish them a wonderful, blessed, and prosperous continuation of their ministry. Thank, Thank you. you. God, God bless, bless you. you. And, and happy 100th anniversary, anniversary to Adventist, Adventist Family, Family Ministries. Ministries. A big congratulations to the directors of Family Ministries Department of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. For a hundred years of strengthening, inspiring hope, and bringing healing to many marriages, families, and individuals within the church and in the larger community, may God bless you with great achievements in the days ahead as you prepare families for the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is indeed a privilege for me to uh, greet the family ministry. I want to congratulate you for 100 years of excellent service to families uh, within our Seventh-day Adventist churches throughout the whole wide world, and also to many families outside of the Seventh-day Adventist church. We thank you 
for the wonderful plan book that you have developed each year and also the many seminars that you have been giving throughout the world churches and you have come across to help us uh, in families to strengthen a marriage relationship, parenting and how we can disciple our children to lead them to Jesus. So thank you Family Ministry for what you have done and may God bless you as you continue to serve the World Church and those outside of our church. It's wonderful to join you in this centennial celebration of family life in the Adventist Church. Yes, here we are building stronger and healthier families around the world. Thank you Willie and Elaine for the privilege of joining you these few seconds. And I'd just like to say, you are fulfilling what God said to Abraham there, quoted in Acts 3.25. In you, Abraham, all the nations of the earth, all the families of the earth, it says, will be blessed. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for what you are doing, raising your children and making happier marriages so that this can come true. And soon, we know, it will be fulfilled what it says in Ephesians 3.15 says, the whole family in heaven and earth, one family, and God's going to help us to join that family together. God be with you. Thank you for those messages of support. So what's next for Family Ministries? Well, there's so much happening with families today. Uh, people need time, they need support, uh, the generations are different, they have different expectations, there's so much social media that's taking place, and we really need for the church to provide a place and resources for families to be able to grow and to be able to understand each other by listening to each other. The more we listen to each other, the better and stronger the families are going to be. The truth is, when we have strong marriages, we're more likely to have strong families. When we have strong families, we're more likely to have a strong church. When we have a strong church, we're more likely to have an opportunity to preach the gospel with power and joy and help hasten the coming of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Karen and Baran, for joining us at this moment. We're going to ask you to pray for us and to pray for families around the world as we celebrate 100 years of family ministries, that the celebration will be much more than artificial. It will be a reality in the lives and in the homes of our members around the world. Shall we pray? Lord, we're in absolute awe today of what you have wrought in these hundred years. We thank you for the pioneers who have faithfully followed your word and your call. And we thank you especially for this team here at the General Conference now, for Will and Elaine and for Don and Karen. And we pray for each of the leaders in the world fields, the various divisions, right down to the local church. Oh Jesus, we so much want to live as children of the light. Please make yourself known to each family around the world. Plant your love in their hearts and make us great lovers for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. As we close this special program, we're going to celebrate the occasion with a special centennial cake and a few photos from our experiences around the world. First, we're going to cut the cake. Then you'll see a few photos. <laughs> <laughs>